All right, welcome to another episode. Today, I am going to be talking about scent searching versus pattern searching in protection, okay, for a household which you are never going to see, okay? I have never seen it in the world. I believe I'm the only one in the world that sells protection dogs with pattern searching on them. And I'm gonna explain the differences now and how pattern searching can be life-saving. Okay, it's a little tricky subject. It's a little bit complicated. Little, so I'm gonna do my best to differentiate the two and what's the difference and why is one better than the other or is there one better than the other so talking about bark and holds now a revere now so this is used what we're going to be talking about here is all the clients, most of the clients that I sell train protection dogs to, or I have trained for a client, want to be able to send the dog into the house while they stay outside and let the dog search the house just in case there's an intruder in the house okay so very important to clarify the effective way to do this for a dog owner is not to go in with the dog and they get the dog on a leash and they go over and they search and they go in the house with the dog right and you don't want to do that <laughs> and especially restrain the dog on the leash in the house because now you are taking away its ability to search fast to search properly and somebody's restraining them directing them and you know leading them around where they're going to go and where they're not going to go okay holding the whole process down so the idea is that we want to send the dog, revere, we use, search, whatever word you want to use, and the dog should fly into the house and search the house. If they find anybody, they hold them there and they bark at them, threatening them and uh, letting you know that they found somebody. I'm serious, revere. And you can call 911, right, if the dog holds them there. If they try to hit the dog, escape, they are going to get bitten. Not going to be good, pleasant. So trying to fight the dog or trying to weapon at them, fleeing, escaping is going to get you mauled. Okay? So we're teaching the dogs to go in, hold somebody in place bark at them, threatening them not to move, scaring them, and allowing you at the same time to know that they found somebody. So you can call 911, okay? And you, don't, you do not have to enter the house and put your life at risk. That is the proper way to do the exercise, okay? Now, A dog who goes off scent, there is no patterning to the house, okay? 
They go in and they are just trying to detect scent, going around trying to find the strongest scent of an odor that does not belong in the house. Okay, that's obvious to the dog. So all the family member scents are there all the time. It's normal. And if there is a strange person in the house, there is going to be an odd odor that the dog is going to pick up very quickly and will start to scent it out, right? And to where it's the strongest where they are now. Now, pattern searching is when we send a dog in and they are taught to go one path, go to the first places that somebody could hide, a room, whatever it is here in this particular example, the dog is gonna fly through this hallway and this is the door that the owner chose here that if he was gonna do this with them, he wanted to send them down this narrow hallway and start in this area of the house and work towards the main area. Okay, so you're gonna see the dog go down the hallway, go into a bedroom there, come back out, if he doesn't find somebody there, come back out and start working his way into and checking areas that come next, then the next, okay, then the next. Skywalker, Revere. So, called pattern searching to make sure, in this particular case, the dog is not going by trying to locate the scent. It is locking down the house by area and getting each area and not skipping one to make sure that if the dog goes and searches the house and it's going by odor, the odors could be all over the place from the person being in there scattering all over the place. They're running down the stairs, they're trying to rob over here. They go in the other room, they're taking things. <clears throat> so it's all fresh scent moving all through the house in different locations as they've been moving through. So for the dog, it can be very confusing to where they are because the scent tracks are crossing all over the place inside the house. Now the dog would have to locate the strongest odor right now and follow that path line in the house to a direct target at the person, okay? Which might take a little bit. They're gonna find them, but it might take a little bit of them going in one direction, but the person's all the way over there, then they track back and then they, they're gonna go all over and all of a sudden eventually locate the strongest scent and beeline to them. But in the meantime, when that's happening, for example, this owner who sends the dog here down the hallway, as the dog goes and searches, for example, if it was scent oriented and the person went down this hallway and took off right, or went into that bedroom, that first one right here where the dog goes in, and the person's scent though was all over and mostly in the main area, and the person just kind of went over there for a second. The dog may come down that hallway and head left instead of right into that bedroom where the person is, and take its time all through that area by the time it realized the scent got strongest going back into that first bedroom. Now, what happens if that, now the dog is on the other side of the house, the person realized that the dog took off and went the other direction. They were trying to hide from the dog, heard the dog and saw the dog go the opposite side of the house from where they're hiding. 
and now try to make a break for it back out that same hallway before the dog realizes, right, that they've been on this side of the house. So they're going to try to get out of the house before the dog ever finds them, avoiding having a conflict with this dog. Okay? And then they run into the owner as they're escaping through that entry that the owner stood outside at, sending the dog in. So because the dog got all caught up with the scent on the other side, now the owner is confronted with this intruder because the dog got lost down in the house somewhere, never realizing the person was there and left and escaped out that route that the owner was standing at. So, that's why pattern searching can be very effective. So we're teaching a dog to not ever skip any of the areas in the pattern. Okay, they can't go to the one room, skip the other one, go to the next one, then maybe backtrack, and then they must learn to go to the one over there, over there, over there, and do it in sequence without skipping any of them, and cover the whole household until they find the person. Skywalker, Revere. or they come back and backtrack just in case, making sure that they've got everything covered, all the areas covered, but they're gone, there's nobody there now, but the house is clear, okay? And in the pattern search, because they're doing that pattern search, the person is not going to be able to escape them. They're going to have to pass them, right, to get out. They're not going to be able to hide in the, any room or any area because of the pattern search. So pattern searching can be very effective, okay? And keeping the owner safer than if it's just scent, okay? And again, remember, the dog has to learn how to do this on its own and pattern search without you. Learn how to go to each place without you because for the safety of this game, you must be outside never entering with the dog and allowing them to go do the job for, for safety, okay? So it's not you going in there with a leash and tailing them and doing all that and all right, search over here, search over there, check here, right? You guiding them. They have to do it and learn the skill automatically how to do it without owner help, okay? Now, both great, but that's the difference between scent and patterning. Now, here, you're going to see Rocco the Shepherd here. Because the house is small, the area is very small, we did scent search. We did not have to do pattern searching. Okay? And here's an example. Owner sends him in the door. Revere, right? He passes the bathroom quickly by scent, turns around, because in that area there's really nowhere else to go. He can see the kitchen area around that corner. I'm not there, but he caught my scent 
passing the bathroom as he went around the corner. and beelined it back quickly to hold me in the bathroom and alert. Now, because he was so fast at it and coming back, I didn't have time to escape there and go attack her because she was standing at the only entry and exit that I have available to me, right? straight out that front door and that's where somebody be leaving not to the yard much more complicated out in the yard there than to get out so that's one example why we did scent search there and not pattern search because it's a very small area and you're not going anywhere and he located he did not know I was there again I said this in other videos it was a setup he had no idea that I was there that day complete surprise and by scent realized that I was in the house and the an intruder was there and quickly back around that corner to block me at that door so I could not get out of the bathroom okay and go attack the owner so because of that small space we did it by scent okay here in the back house here the owner sends him out and you can see as he's going in the yard, he's got his head up. He's not sure if I'm in the back house there, straight ahead of him. So you see his head is up looking around the yard and smelling at the same time with eyesight and smelling. Because really he can see everything visually in that yard there's nowhere really to hide without him seeing me without using his nose he can see clearly so he did a quick check with his eyes using his nose too seeing if he could locate at the same time nothing in the yard so he went straight to the back house and my scent was getting stronger there you could tell he knew when he got close to the house that I was in there, the scent got really strong there and you can see on his behavior. When he gets in the house, you can see it's all nose. He's using his nose, smelling there, if I've been there, in the bathroom, out into the other area, smelling chairs, right? He's really using nose scent and detecting, trying to pick up my scent to which where I, I went, was I just there? Okay, and eventually got me on the other side and trapped me in that closet. Okay, and of course now I can't get out and because that space is small also, if I tried to get out from that closet over there and tried to get out of that room and get out the door, he already would have seen me because there, it's a small space. I had nowhere to go without him hearing me or seeing me try to escape the other room and get out that door I would have been caught okay so because these are small areas we did scent searching a house like the other one where there's one level then he has to go and search 
that area, to the kitchen around there, to another side where there's a bathroom. Then there's a downstairs, okay? Much bigger territory and places to hide. <laughs> so we start at the nearest place. As soon as we say and send them in, we've taught the dog to start at the nearest location from where we've sent them in and work themselves through the house so that nobody can escape or pass the dog without the dog knowing it and run into the owner and have a problem and the owner get hurt, okay? So those are the two differences and why scent work is effective in small areas, patterning is more effective when it's large areas. Now, because we've taught patterning doesn't mean that the dog isn't allowed to break the patterning rule, okay? If they are dead set on a scent, okay, and they are sure that it, the person went this way instead of starting the pattern there, the opposite way, when the dog, like here for example, you're going to see this dog, these two dogs, these two puppies, that we're teaching the patterning to. We're also teaching them to search for people outside the house in open areas where you cannot pattern. It has to be all nose and them to catch that nose scent no matter where it goes, miles even. And there's no pattern to it every time that a person is going every time the dog searches, right? It's just open, vast territory with all sorts of smells, all different types of, you know, odors and wind thing. So here we're teaching them to use their noses and find people if they were lost, okay? to say that. Speed racer. Search. This is far. Good boy. Good boy, speed. Yes, good boy. Good big boy. party, big party. Okay, now we're going to hide behind the car. This is going to involve two turns, two corners. This is going to be complicated. Ready? Search! Okay, good. You can smell the scent cone because he did not go on her line. She had a line that was supposed to stick to the uh, periphery. And he just picked up the Senko and he's going. Yes, good boy! Good boy! Yes, good He was boy. amazing. That was amazing. So these puppies are going to be sold with searching for people if a family member gets lost or they need the dog to find somebody for someone. And then we have 
to search the house in a, an aggressive manner, right? The search for people is non-aggressive, on a leash, controlled, right? Let the dog take us and we will just go wherever they take us on the leash. We don't tell them where to go or try to control them to where to go. We just follow them and they lead. Let their nose lead, okay? So we're not letting them off the leash, right? To go far, we don't know where the person went, could be miles, and letting the dog just take off, right? And <laughs> they just get lost, right? Running that far, who knows where they go into a woods or whatever, or across streets or anything like that, it's too dangerous. And we want the dog in the searching not to be aggressive, an aggressive state towards a child or somebody that they are finding. We want happy, go lucky, pleasant, that the person is happy you found them and the dog found them, not the dog goes and finds them and rah, 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 right? Especially if the dog went on its own, you know, out in the open wilderness to go find a missing person and all of a sudden they're getting confronted with this dog that's aggressively barking at them and now they're terrified and wish they were never found <laughs> because the dog is terrorizing them okay so when we're doing this this people searching out in the open we're doing it in a happy treats from the person that they found to make it a very happy experience and the dog wanting to find them and and being very affectionate okay but and on a leash so that we can let them take us and find the person in the house we're letting them go no leash work no controlling them no going with them okay so now because we're teaching them scent work outside and having to use their nose strictly not their eyes they have to be able to use their nose to be able to locate the scent of where the person just went like these two puppies that they have no idea where the person has gone we don't let them know okay so they're blind to this they we're starting them and they have no idea what direction they went they don't know what trail they took they have no idea now they got to get their nose going and they have to catch the scent and tell us what direction where we're going and get on the trail and find that person stay with that person's scent until you find them okay so when these two puppies have this skill that we're teaching them outside as well and they know how to pattern search here as well it can be later that again they skip the pattern knowing really sure right that the scent is strong and they never went into that first location they're in that direction for sure that's fine so as long as they're very good and trusting their nose they can skip things right if the scent is just telling them there's one trail going that direction it's definitely not in the first few areas that normally they would go pattern search and start there it's definitely over there and it's not in this first area or the areas then that is all fine if they choose to do that in the end okay as long as they are on it and we would test that in training to make sure that if the person went that way and they skipped the patterning that they better be dead on about this if they were not and it was guesswork we would then stick to the patterning and not allow them to skip the patterning okay and go back to that and keep it that way and not allow even if a strong scent was going i still want them to pattern and not break the pattern okay so and the person could be any one of those areas could be that first room 
could be the other area, could be the other area, right, in the training. So, but they have to go always the same direction through the same door. One, two, three, four, five, six, and keep the pattern. So here, this puppy, when he goes through, starts exactly, goes and does the exact pattern, covers that whole first floor, knowing that there's nobody covered all the areas that the person could be, and then goes downstairs because he had the first floor locked down. That is what we want to see. Skywalker, Revere. We don't want to see the puppy going and going down the stairs when it did not finish the first floor sweep, okay? Because that would be dangerous. Now the puppy goes in, the dog goes in, skips half that upper floor, goes downstairs. The person sees the dog go down, they take off, the dog is searching downstairs, doesn't know that the person got themselves out and then runs into the owner again, right? Surprise. So. That is what we are trying to avoid. So the puppy here does exactly the perfect thing and goes right through and does the exact pattern and covers that whole first floor before going down the stairs and finding the person downstairs. Okay, now there is a stairway over there on that floor that goes up, but the dogs are not allowed to go up those stairs. So that's why you don't see us using the stairs over there to the left on the video that go up because the dogs are not allowed up there so and they've never been up there they don't know what the stairs and where it goes to and it's not necessary for us because if they lock down that first floor and if they smelt a heavy scent going up those stairs they would just sit down there and bark right and bark 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 and looking up there we know that that will be the behavior that will be coming and they wouldn't even shoot downstairs once they get that strong scent up so that person wouldn't be able to come down the stairs right they were gonna have to jump themselves out a second story window <laughs> to avoid the dog which is gonna be very unpleasant because there is no way down from there pleasantly right so now in this particular house, right, you, everybody's house, this would have to be for a pet dog, protection dog. If you had a working dog, you would not want to pattern like this, right? A dog that was going to go out like a police dog or a military dog, because they're going to be going to different places all the time that the dog would never know how to pattern in that particular place that house that building whatever it is so that's more now scent work so it's much different than a personal protection dog that we are talking about here in this video so when somebody buys one because it's gonna be that house all the time right always they're gonna be living in that house that we can pattern train because it's the house they live in and they see every day they know well and we get to do the exercise of teaching them how to pattern through that house right if the person moved it's a very quick process then of pattern training the new house right no big deal we just go back and do that if the space is small then we don't need to pattern train okay we can just go by scent so again if it's a personal protection dog who lives in a house with somebody pattern training can be very effective and ideal okay 
So, but not if it's a working service dog. Police dog, military dog, very difficult. They're not going to be able to know where to pattern in the places because they've never been there. They don't know what rooms go to where. That is not ideal, okay, or realistic. But we're talking strictly personal protection dogs for families, all right? So pattern training for that environment can be fantastic instead of going by scent only, okay? So those are the differences in scenting searching and pattern searching for someone. I thought I'd bring this out to you guys just in case as an interesting topic. And it is fascinating when you really understand it because it's not easy to pattern train a dog. It is not an easy, simple thing to get them to pattern like this puppy is doing. It takes skill, it takes good technique, constantly being able to shift things in the way the dog does not, so it does not skip areas and is, runs right through it fluidly. Okay, not an easy thing to do. It takes a lot of skill, a lot of technique. So till next time, I'm Richard Hines, and I'll see you in the next video.